Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham Show. I'm so happy you're here with me today. I have a question for you. What or who do you believe you are? Who do you believe yourself to be? Ponder that for a second. Today, I am interviewing Judy Weber, a business coach and scaling strategist for Christian women who want to build million-dollar businesses. And we're going to talk about the importance of what you believe about yourself and how to make decisions like a CEO. Because as small business owners, that's exactly what you are. You are the CEO of your business. Without further ado, Judy Weber, welcome to The Robin Graham Show. It is such an honor to be here, Robin. I've been looking forward to this all week. Thank you. Good, 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 good. So before we start, Judy, will you tell the listeners a little bit about your background and your journey to become the coach that you are today? Yeah, it's a long, windy road. So cut me off, okay, if I go too long. But long story short, I'm a poor girl from a small town, always had big dreams. And so I was the first one in my family to go to college. I'm one of six kids. Dad was a factory worker. Mom stayed home. Um, I always just wanted, I felt like God put something in me to make a big impact. And so when I was in college, I became very interested in the law. And I remember saying to my parents, I really want to go to law school. And they just, they didn't even have an answer. They just kind of looked at me. Um, but anyway, five years after graduating from high school or college, I decided, you know what, I am going to go to law school. And how that was, was I was in a sales job and I came out of a sales appointment with an attorney and I was so unimpressed with him. And I thought, my God, if he can do it, I can do it. So anyway, went to Nova near you and um, got a great job. But then I got married and got pregnant within three months. And I can tell you, Rob, in the first minute when that doc said, the test is positive, you're pregnant. I remember I was at my office and I pushed back from my desk and I looked up and I said, Lord God, thank you. And I, all of a sudden, nothing else mattered, but that baby. So that's really who I am. Like being a mother is the thing of which I'm most proud. I have three wonderful young adult sons that you know about. Um, anyway, long windy road. So then I was in the law, had not one, not two, but three little boys. At that point, I left the private practice of law. Within a couple of weeks, as hard as that is, I always had this ambition in me and felt like I needed to do something else. So I launched my first business as an interior decorator with kids that were like little yet and um, did very well, had 10 clients within, I don't know, a couple of weeks. And then it was like, oh my gosh, well, I have all these clients. How am I going to service them? Um, so anyway, that was an awesome ride. Uh, years and years later, got approaching divorce. And so I went back into the private practice of law, um, loved that. But being in Philly, let me tell you something, <laughs> corruption's a real thing <laughs> in the court system, as sad as it is. Anyway, so I know I'm going back and forth and, and through a lot of things, but then I left the practice of law because I had an opportunity to go in-house, which I absolutely loved, general counsel and head of HR at a multi-million dollar, dollar international company and loved it. I loved everybody there except the boss. He was a male chauvinist, um, just a horrible person, just an ugly, ugly person. And so I left and that was back in 2017 when I became a, officially a business coach. Now, before then I had been helping women because they're like, how did you build your businesses? Because I've always had businesses, many of them. How did you build them to success when you were a full-time lawyer? Or how did you do this when you were a full-time mom? So that just evolved into that, uh, coaching women on how to do that. And now all these years later, it's become much more focused on Christ. He is the center, as you know, as one of my clients, he is the center of everything we do in the way we think, and the way we act and the way we approach our business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And that brings us, Judy, to that question that I asked the listeners at the very beginning, as far as who do you believe yourself to be? And I know you have a very strong philosophy on this. And of course, I agree with it. Um, but talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I believe that success is a um, is a factor of who you believe yourself to be, not who you are. Because what I found is that women that I am blessed to meet, they're amazing. They're such experts. They can help 
you know, people in so many ways, but yet they don't see that in themselves. And so they don't believe that they're the expert and therefore they struggle to create their offers. They struggle to struggle to sell their offers. They struggle even to get themselves out there and do things like this, like be interviewed on podcasts or even get on TV or even, you know, appear on social. So I really believe that it's about really knowing who you are. And I just want to say as a Christian, it's like, I am nothing but for Christ. I am dirt. I am dust, you know, but in him, he empowers me to do big things and to make a big impact. So, so that's the, that's the foundation of this idea that success is a result of who you believe yourself to be. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And I think when we have Christ on our side, you know, when we know him and we have the, let the Holy spirit guide us every step of the way, it, the decision-making process is so much easier and you can make decisions that can transform you as a person, as well as a business owner, but also transform how you work with other people because you're empowering yourself through Christ and the guidance he's giving you to make decisions that definitely move things forward. So that kind of segues into the, the main topic of our discussion, which is making decisions like a CEO. And I would love for you to, because you have really grown your business and it's, I didn't realize that you were, you've always had the entrepreneurial spirit. I know you were a realtor for a while. You had your interior design business. Um, So the entrepreneurial part of you has always been there, but I didn't realize that you were full-time coaching only six years. So Let's talk about how thinking like a CEO and making CEO decisions has gotten you to where you are in such a short period of time. Yeah. You know what I attribute it to? I attribute it to my law degree. The first day I went to Villanova, the I still remember it because I still was like, pinch me. I can't believe I'm here in law school. And the dean said, ladies and gentlemen, you are about to be given the keys to the kingdom. Now, as soon as she said that, I was like, wait a minute, what the Lord God's kingdom? What the heck is she talking about? But it is a way that they train lawyers to think. And I say it very simply that they teach us how to think to win, how to strategize to win. Mm-hmm. And so in the way of decision making, you know, whether it's looking at I did medical malpractice defense, so I was representing doctors. So I would be looking at reams and reams of medical records, that's before electronic medical records, and going through them and trying to find that smoking gun or what did the other side miss or whatever, you know, but it's decision-making on what is the strategy to win this case. It's the same approach to what is the strategy to create an offer, the right offer, as I say, for my best clients and every decision along the way for, you know, from once it's created, how do you market it? How do you talk about it? How do I sell it? Um, how do I, what do I price it on? You know, decision-making too many times I see super smart women who I love and can totally relate to, like they're, they're cerebral, like they're, they're sharp, you know, but, but we labor over the details. Oh, but what if maybe I should price it at 5k, not 3k. Maybe I should price it at 2000 instead of 8,000 or whatever. And it's just like, you know what? We have to learn to, uh, evaluate to think always in terms of your best client, like who are they and what are they looking for, what you provide and make a decision without over laboring or overthinking about it. I love that. And I think that oftentimes indecision is the number one thing that holds people back. They're It's collective, of course, because you have to have belief in yourself. You have to have belief in the purpose that God's given you. And you have to have belief that your soulmate clients are there. They're waiting for you. They're ready for you. And God has planted a seed in them to seek you out, to find you, to hire you. So belief is a very big part of overall success. But I do believe that making decisions can make you or break you. Yes, I agree. And a couple of things I'd love to say about that. I'm scribbling my notes so I don't forget it, if I may. <laughs> okay. So first of all, indecision is a decision. And, you mm-hmm. know, it's almost like they say in the Bible, it says, scripture says, don't turn to the right or to the left, like look straight ahead. 
Or the other thing it says is don't waver. And I forget exactly where or what, but the point is, you know, you're double-minded. You know, I'm thinking this, oh, but yeah, but what about that? And so to your point, indecision is a huge problem or really it's, I want everybody listening to understand that if you're contemplating, for example, investing in working with Robin, okay, and you really want to do it, Oh, but it costs X dollars. And oh, I don't know if I have the time. And then you that putting off of the decision is a decision. Like the lack of decision making, you've default decisioned in no. And if you are the same place today that you were six months ago, how's that working for you? And I say that out of love. I mean, I know the first time I invested 70 some thousand dollars in my most expensive coach to date. I was scared out of my mind, but once I was in, I was all in and my life hasn't been the same since. And so decision-making is huge. The other thing I want to say is that people think about decision-making as a one-step thing. I've made a choice, but here's the problem. We make a choice. For example, I'm going to go with this offer. I'm going to put this program together and we're going to move forward, you know, but then when things might not be happening as quickly as you would have liked, I don't have as many clients that signed up, you know, I'm not making as much money. Then all of a sudden that decision you made, you change your mind. Therefore, it wasn't a decision because a decision is a two-part process. One is the choice, the decision itself. And second is the commitment to it. And so that, like you said, indecision is the biggest issue. Absolutely. And that is where it shows up, where I say, I'm going to go with this offer. And when it doesn't sell in like a month, all of a sudden we're like throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Big, big problem. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it all goes back to that wavering. And if you make a decision, you have to stand, like put your stake in the ground and stand firm in that decision. And I think I just had this conversation with someone yesterday who was ready to throw in the towel and give up because she had done three la two launches this year and only out of both of them gotten two clients. Well, when I started asking her questions, it was really interesting because first of all, there wasn't a lot of belief there. Second of all, it was a lot of desperation. And third, the wavering of maybe that's not the right thing. Maybe they just don't want that. And the back and forth, the what ifs, the maybes, the what ifs, the maybes ultimately had her ready to pull the plug on her business. And I think a lot of people give up way too soon. And I think yeah. part of that is number one, like the belief, number two, the decision-making and the indecision. But number three is not building the foundation first, kind of throwing spaghetti at the wall, uh, seeing everything on social and thinking, oh, I'll try that. That'll work for me if it's working for them. Or I'll try that because, oh, sure, my, my people will like that because if her people like that, we're in the same niche so that my people have to like that. But we don't realize that differentiating ourselves and planning and making decisions that are best for us at the same time as considering what's best for our soulmate client, that's when people run into that wavering indecision to the point where I guess I'll give up because it's just not working. Mm, yeah, I think we we tend as humans to underestimate what is required because all we see are overnight successes, quote unquote, right? And we're like, well, wait a minute, I've been doing this thing for six months, a year, two years, what's going on? Like, but, but I want everyone listening, if that is you to evaluate, what has the last six months, year or two years looked like in the way of your decision-making? Have you been changing what you call yourself? Have you been changing your offer? Have you been consistent in showing up? All of this, Robin, you hit the nail on the head right in the beginning. All of this goes back to your identity mm -hmm. because when you stand strong as an expert and you know that, Hey, just like you and I, we grow every day. We are studying our craft. We are getting better at what we do every day. But if unless and until we stand firm on who we are, who the Lord God almighty made us to be, then we're going, it's going to be easier to accept as truth, the lies of the enemy. Mm -hmm. that are whispering in our ear saying, sit down, shut up. You're not worthy. Who are you? And all of that. So we really need to be firm. And the other aspect of identity is, um, you know, just really being you like, 
you know me, Robin, because we work together, but I have some edges and I'm working on them. I assure you of that. But I tend to be very cut and dry. You know, like, oh, this yes, is what you do. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes it comes off mean, but I don't intend it that way. It's it's more that just, you know, as a lawyer, I'm just like, okay, boom, boom, boom. Like, that's kind of how I am. So I know I've got to like iron those out. But for my best client, she sees that she may not, you know, she understands it and she appreciates the fact that I'm no BS, mm-hmm. that I'm there to get the job done for you, for us collectively. So I really want everybody, like when we think about, oh, we have to show up a certain way, or I, I can't go on social without my hair and makeup. That's something that God's working on me on, Robin, to say, you know what, Jude, you think because you're almost 60 that you have to put your face together. Maybe you don't just be you. (laughs) Oh, and I love that. The just be you, because there's so many pretenses that we see online and it's not reality. And I think that's, you know, one of the reasons why I'm so opposed to social building a business on social media, because it, it is a lot of false pretenses. And, and how do you know that you can trust someone else? But also if you're so perfect on screen, then how are people going to really know if they trust you? So there's so many factors um, that can play into that. But the other thing about making decision too that I think we often forget is that we have to ask for God's guidance before we make the final decision. And as type A personalities, as control freaks and perfectionists and all of these things, we don't want to wait for answers. And I just did a a Friday Faith Foundation episode, and I will link that in the show notes as well as listeners, an episode that I did on indecision and how, like Judy said, it is indecision is a decision. I think that was the title of the episode. Um, But a big part of that is going to scripture and discovering what is God telling you? And, you know, you can look in the index, you can look in, you know, the the concordance and see, put in the word that, you know, whatever it is you're making a decision about, and you're going to find scripture that's going to guide you, but also ask the Holy Spirit. He's there. And there's, I'll link an episode I did, um, another Friday Faith Foundation on intuition and how that intuition is actually the Holy Spirit nudging you. He's giving you feedback, but because we like to be in control we like to make the decisions. We want things in our time. We rush decisions or we don't evaluate fully or we ignore that voice that we're hearing. So I wanted to put an emphasis on that too, because it's such a critical component, I think, for making decisions that are not only good for us, but good for the people around us and that we're going to be working with. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was a mouthful. So good. I'm writing notes as you're, as you're speaking. I just want to, you know, when you're talking about scripture, everything I do also goes back to scripture. And so this idea of pray first, Esther, what an important job she had. What I know, she was made for such a time as this. And she prayed first. Daniel prayed there. He, you know, uh, he was facing, you know, death and still, you know, he, he pursued there. Um, but you know what I do, I would like to talk on this issue of indecision, uh, Robin, just for a second. I can't remember the name, but who is the person that asked God to tell him something and okay, make one side of the fleece dry and the other side dewy. And then I'll know I should do it. Who the heck was that Robin? Was that Job? Was it Job? If you say the name Gideon, Gideon. No, it was no, right? no, it was, no, it um, might've been, it might, it might have been Gideon because when it might have been Gideon before God made him the warrior, I think yeah, that that, I think that it might've been, been Gideon. Yeah. But look that up. Those listening. I'll look that up and I'll put that in the show notes, everybody. Don't worry. Okay. It'll be there awesome. for you. Awesome. Cause the thing I want to talk about there just for a moment is you said, sometimes we rush to decisions and that's true. Sometimes out of emotion, we just rush to it and we think we're going in the right direction when really we didn't pause to ask God first. But I thought, I think also for Christians, we use, I've got to talk to God as an excuse sometimes to overthink. Mm. So I think that's a line. I would never, um, you know, judge that situation. That is your personal thing with the Lord God. But what I've seen is, and I've seen this happen a lot, is that women, they want to say yes, but they'll come up with every excuse as to why they can't say yes to themselves to invest in a course, invest in a program, 
to, you know, even pitch a certain thing like this great opportunity because they think they, they, they say they have to pray about it. And I wonder if it's a situation where God's already given you the green light, just like Gideon, if that's the right person and saying, okay. And it, what did he say? He said, well, Lord, is this really you? Or is this just a freak of nature? Can you do that again? And then he goes, okay, leave the fleece out. And he did it again. So if there is a situation that you've been contemplating and you're overthinking, Go to God and say, Lord, have you already told me what to do? And I'm just not hearing it. You know, uh, the best thing we can do for our businesses is seek a closer relationship with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, (laughs) everyone, I'll link another episode that I did on overthinking and how that really (laughs) does delay our progress because we do tend to sit and think and think, and think some more. And that can lead to two different things. It can lead to inaction, or it could lead to excessive action, like buying multiple courses, hiring multiple coaches, or not making the right decision as to which to purchase. And you're just like, well, I got to have it all because otherwise I won't be able to grow. And the reality is all that does is create confusion. So now you're back to a place of indecision. So it it all is almost cyclical. Like you really have to think it's like an open loop. And if you, if you overthink, you're going to be indecisive. If you're indecisive, you're going to overthink the two go hand in hand. So you've got to structure your, you've got to somehow figure out what's the best decision-making process for you. So that leads me to my next question, Judy, and then we'll start to wrap up. But as far as your decision-making process, do you have one? And if so, will you share it with the listeners? Oh, I love that question. Okay. I want to say one more thing before on this whole point, before I get into my specific way I approach decision-making. Well, I guess this is a part of it. When there's a decision I need to make, I'm always thinking, um, this will work. Like I will figure it out. You know, like if there's a team issue, if there's a client issue, if I have an issue with me personally or within my uh, profession as a coach, you know, I'm always saying, okay, there is many ways that I could do it. Let's go to God first. Secondly, I'm going to put my brain to it and I'm going to be like, okay, I know there's an answer. What, 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 what am I going to go forward with? And then whatever I decide, I don't approach it from, I'll try it out. I approach it from, this is it. I'm going all in. Right. So like, uh, when I'm working with a coach, uh, and there's something that, you know, I'm learning that's hard. Like for, for me, it's especially mindset. Some of those money blocks being raised poor, it's hard to, I find it more difficult to get rid of it. And so I could choose to throw up my hands and say, well, I'll never change. Oh, well. But instead I say, okay, great. Now I, this hurts. This isn't comfortable. This doesn't feel good. But Judy, if you want to get to the next breakthrough, this is where it is. So you lean in. So I I just want to encourage the women out there listening that decision-making can be as hard or as easy as you decide it is, right? And there it is. You have to decide right there. Is it hard or is it something I can do? And then it's all about going all in and not having a plan B. Because when we have a plan B, it's almost like we're giving ourselves a way out. Oh, I'll try it for a time and see how it goes. No, no, no. (laughs) If that is you, if that's your habit and you're stuck, I would venture to say that's why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like that perspective. And I think it's, you know, you're a strategist, like your brain, our brains think very similarly. Like I've got to have a strategy to get to where I'm going. And it's the same thing with making decisions. So if the listeners are struggling with making decisions, design your process that's going to work for you and have it be part of a strategy. So as you're evaluating things, you can look at, well, if I, if I make this decision, then I'm going to next have to do this and next this, and it's going to influence this. And it's going to, you know, you can map that out as you make the decision. And if you're wavering between one decision and another, map them both out. This is where pen to paper is such a powerful tool and it's like meditating you know you can go meditate on on what you're thinking about or what you're trying to make a decision about but if you journal it and you write it out and you map it out as though it were a strategy you're going to see very quickly at which phase of either of those decisions it doesn't feel right and then you can move on decision made but you have to hold to the decision and i think that's like you said earlier it's that wavering where people get so stuck. 
Yeah. I love what you just said because you know me, I love to power think. Ladies, men, I don't know who, I mean, whoever might be listening to the sound of our voice right now. We listen, have both. <laughs> you, that's my thought. You, because I only work with women. That's why I always go there. But you need to access your brain more and have more confidence that the brain the good Lord gave you has a heck of a, you know, a heck of a lot more than you think you do. So I love what Robin just said in power think and get it down in writing for you to look at. Because we, you know, we entrepreneurs, we tend to be visionaries and super duper creative. So we have all these ideas and we have all these things we could do, but if we don't ever capture them on a piece of paper so that we can go back to it, all these great ideas and all these strategies and ways to do things are just going to be lost. Yeah, absolutely. And here we are, we did a full circle back to belief because when you believe in whose you are and who you are as an individual and a child of Christ, you are going to feel more confident and you're going to be more certain in the decisions that you make. Full circle, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> with that, we're going to wrap up. Judy, can you please tell the listeners where they can connect with you and learn more from you? Absolutely. Uh, I am on social, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram at, at Judy Weber Co. My website's judyweber.co. And may I offer a freebie to your people, Robin? Of course you can. Absolutely. All right. Awesome. I have a five-part training series for those of you in the earlier stages of business. It's delivered via email, one per day, so you can consume it at your own pace. It's called uh, Build a Six-Figure Faith-Fueled Business, and you can find that at judyweber.co slash five-day workshop. So I'm sure we'll have all that in the notes, but that has been my most impactful um series that I've ever put together. And it was absolutely the Lord God almighty. I mean, I just sit there and I say, what do you got Lord? And he downloaded these amazing things. So it all, all yeah. glory for me. Yeah. And they know everybody on the show who listens knows like I'm all about the Holy spirit. We've had a lot of conversations on the show where I'm, I tell them right straight from the get go. I have no idea where this conversation is going. The Holy spirit's going to work because somebody okay. needs to hear something from this person. And it's always the most incredible experience. Mm. All right, friends, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for staying to the end of the episode. I appreciate you so much. And I'm so grateful that you chose to spend this time with us today. I do hope that you will consider working on your beliefs and working on those decision-making processes so that you will be able to grow your business with simplicity, ease, and grace. And as always, you know where to find me, Robin at therobingraham.com. If you have questions, you can easily reach out. Thanks for being here and we'll see y'all next time.